Today in the studio, folks, I got a real treat for you. Neil Dingra, what's cracking? What's up, man? Thanks for having me, dude. If you guys don't know this dude, you're probably starting to see him. His Instagram is at Neil Home, N E E L Home, content creator, real estate investor, mortgage banker, entrepreneur, basically out there trying to help those in the mortgage and real estate industry thrive, basically. By yes, building sir. personal brands. And he's building himself a personal brand, puts out a lot of good content, so go follow him. What's cracking? Where were you 10 years ago? How old are you, first of all? I'm uh, I'm be 40 next month. Dude. Okay, so so where were you 15 years ago? 25-year-old Neil, where were you? So I was just starting off in the mortgage business. Um uh, you know, just trying to get business, trying to make it trying to make money, trying to trying to get people to do business with me. And like I started straight out of college. And this was like a, um, I don't know if you heard about the housing industry back pre-2007. I know you had Glenn Stearns on here tell you a little bit about what happened you, back when, then. When you said, what, did I hear about it? Shit, I lived it. Yeah, yeah. So this was the Dude, epicenter. I got underwear older than you. <laughs> That's right, actually. So this was the epicenter of it, Nevada, Las Vegas. I think it was the hardest hit. So I got into the business. It was a, it was a full party. Like, I mean, kids were just young guys getting into real estate and mortgage were just making a killing. Why, what, why though? Uh, because what happened was, um, you know, basically there was so much speculation in housing. People were just, you know, buying houses to flip, make get rich quick, all this stuff. And the money was free. It was, it was just like being given easily. So if yeah, you had like, a pulse, you could get a mortgage and buy a property and or, or several. Oh yeah. Like I knew people that shouldn't have had one home. They had five. Yeah. So, I mean, we were doing deals for people that were uh, like literally s delivering pizza and buying rental properties or so, buying so, houses to flip. So why was the bank allowing it? So they were putting all the deals together and securitizing them. And basically as long as property values keep going up, this debt performs, it, it covers everything. So you could have people that couldn't afford these loans, whatever. They're just, the value keeps going up. They keep extracting, they keep flipping and that keeps the the party going. Right. And then that just continued for years, uh, just making money hand over fist. And what's crazy is I got into the business as a 25 year old making, you know, you, you get to making a hundred thousand dollars a month, you know, and making seven figures in a year. I mean, you don't like when you first get that kind of money as a, as a 25 year old, like, the kind of things that were going on back then were pretty wild, man. So what kind of things? Uh, so, I mean, the guy we worked for, uh, we would, I mean, just going to clubs, you know, on the weekends, um, making it rain. Wild, yeah. Making it rain. I mean, hookers, parties, like strippers. I mean, they're just wild stuff, you know, like sort of like Wolf of wall street style, you know, that's what, that's what the environment was. It was all about getting money. Did you partake? Uh, not really. You know, I was there, but I didn't you see you know, very, clean cut look. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get in any of the drugs. I know a lot of people were abusing alcohol and drugs at the time. I never got into any of that shit, but, um, I did get into like a lot of gambling, you know, just money just flowing, you know? So like you get all the bad habits, the vices, whether it was alcohol, drugs, women, or gambling. I noticed so those what are if the someone, things. What if someone hits, you know, starts kicking ass, hitting their stride in their business and, and, and good money starts pouring in. What advice would you give them that you learned the hard way? Oh yeah. So for sure I would start segregating the money into different accounts, you know? So I, I would just put the money into, you know, a first an account for investing that you don't touch another account for taxes. A lot of people skip that step and that really fucks with you. Cause if you start owing the IRS, then you got some major problems, right? Yeah, um, you definitely do. People don't file their taxes. I mean, I meet people all the time that haven't filed taxes in years, you know, and then they can't sleep at night. They're wondering what's going to happen. So what will happen? Well, you, they'll, they'll let you slide for a while, but then you'll get a demand and then get a lien that's filed. So when we do deals for people all the time and they've got tax liens, you know, people just don't, don't file their taxes and the IRS puts a lien. Okay. So what happens if you get a lien? I, heard, I thought you can't buy a house with a lien. You can't buy a house and your wages can be garnished. And that tax lien is higher than any other priority. They can reach into your bank and take your money out of your bank. We've had people get it attached to their bank accounts. So they go into their bank of America one day and the money's gone. Let's so take it. you can't fuck with the IRS. I mean, they can literally reach into your bank and take your assets. So and that's you one. Can't, and you can't buy a house with a tax lien. You cannot because so it, make yeah. sure your freaking tax account is set up 
and you funnel in what 30 percent yeah for sure i segregate at one third for tax purposes um unless you can have it withheld from your earnings it's just crazy when you make a million dollars and it's in the bank and you see it every day and you're like oh i can afford that i can afford that yeah, what yeah. you're not anticipating is dude a third of that is not yours you're just holding on to it it's gone it's literally gone from the top so i would put that money away you can't touch it can't spend it you know, and then a lot of to, people uh, I'm have to drop a bomb on that one folks yeah if i were you guys i would be really careful with the irs make sure you pay them make That's sure the, i mean again loopholes and legal loopholes and all the shit the cpas can teach you and get away with cool as long as it's legal number one and number two pay them damn taxes yeah, I just think like that's the one thing you can't fuck with is is the tax man, you know. So people uh, should segregate their money. And then the one thing I wish I did then that I'm doing now was making long term investments. I was always looking at what am I going to make this month? What am I making next month? Uh, if I want to buy a stock, how much did I make right now? Like, can we get rich today? What's long term? So years. Right. Yeah, you think like, about in your mind was a five year a long term. I would say five to 10 year window. Right. So, um, one thing that I did at that time was trade a lot of equities, you know, stocks, options, things like this. And what I found is I think it's gotta be 90% or more of people who trade things short term, lose all their money. It's just gambling at the end of the day, people, you know, talking about stock trading and all this stuff. I bought Cardano. Cardano. You ever heard of Cardano? Oh, it's public stock? No, it's a, it's a coin. Oh, you're talking ADA. about uh, crypto? Yeah. Okay, Bitcoin. Yeah, that's what ADA, I wish I bought back I bought, then. I bought 25 grand just for shits and giggles. It's already up to 29. I own some Bitcoin and some Ethereum. Bitcoin 63,437 as of taping. Yeah. Is that crazy, dude? That is crazy. Dude, I had 150 of these bitches. Yeah, I saw that on a podcast recently. You said you had a lot. A Bitcoin. Pisses me off. I should have just held. Yeah. So you hear about these people. All you had to do was buy Amazon and hold it for 10 years. Yeah, All like you had it, to do was buy Apple and hold it for 10 years. But why doesn't anybody do it? Well, here's the thing though. If, if anybody ever gets asked the question, what happens? I mean, if you could go back in time, what would you do? They say buy a lottery ticket. You know, I'd go back to like, I could, if I dial it in, I'd go back to when Bitcoin was like seven cents Yeah. and put everything I had and then just wait. Cause b from when it was seven cents till now, it's not even 10 years. Yeah. How long has it been? Uh, 2002 or 2012, something like that. So 2012 till now, it's almost 10 years, dude. And your seven cent Bitcoin would make you a trillionaire. If Literally. You bought a shit ton of them. Yeah. Like if you, imagine if you bought a, a million Bitcoin. Well, you got to think about this. The guy who, who founded Coinbase, right? That pub, that company just went public. The in guy's his bedroom. He, dude, he founded it in a bedroom. I think he founded it in two, I think it found it in the last four or five years uh, to now being worth $20 billion as of now because of the value of the stock. You know, it just went public. And then not to I mention his some, Bitcoin but holdings. I, but I lost. Yeah. I bought some at like 400. What is it right now? I don't know, man. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Someone told me, go get it. And I had a little bit of money in my Robin Hood account. <clears throat> yep. I'm still down. Down 10% so, on Coinbase, you bastards. So one thing that uh, I did in, in my investing that has really worked for me is just buying something and leaving it alone, not fucking with it. Don't trade it. Don't get caught up in the hype and uh, pick something and just leave it alone. So the one position I have, and I don't know if, you know, people, you know, talk about diversification and the Rob Lunas of the world and all these guys, they'll tell you, spread your, you know, spread your risk, right? But I looked at like the most successful, the most wealthy people they went all in on things. They didn't buy the S&P 500 and buy this and buy that and be very nice. They went and put it all on the line on a couple things and it paid off, whether that's your business or whatever. So the first thing I was thinking of investing all in on is yourself and your business. And then the next thing I was doing with excess income was putting it in a stock called Zillow. And everyone sort of Zillow, right? So I'd look at Zillow three, four years ago and I had a podcast with Gary Vee two years ago and I'm sitting with them and we're talking about Zillow. And he goes, uh, Zillow has all the data. They're going to take over real estate. You know, I that's something I would own long-term. And this is a guy who's like, you know, early investor in fucking Facebook and Venmo, Twitter, Twitter all the, I mean, this guy sees things. Passed Uber three times though. Yeah. Yeah. He fucked that up, but he sees things. Right. And he's like, yeah, they have all the data. They're going to take over. 
And I'm like, okay, I'm starting looking at it. At the time, Zillow's a $20 stock, right? So I just say, okay, I'm putting, uh, you know, not retirement money, but just my money I could afford to lose. I'm putting 200 grand in Zillow. I'm not going to fucking touch it. And just don't look at it. And then a year later, it's a hundred dollars a share. It hit two hundred dollars a share earlier this year, and then it pulled back. What I don't know where it's at today, but I'm looking at them, and I'm like, okay, this real estate market's trillions of dollars a year. Is Zillow going to be a place where people buy and sell homes, even if it's five percent? It's five percent of every market across the country, right? So they're going to take a piece of that pie. They don't have to take over the whole industry, but they're going to take a piece, and you're going to go on Zillow. You're going to sell your house to Zillow, or you're going to go on Zillow and you're going to click a house and you're going to buy it. And then by the way, Zillow is going to do the mortgage. By the way, they're going to do the title. By the way, they're going to do the insurance. So the guy who's running it now, the new CEO stepped in, I think two years ago, he took over. He wants to make it end to end experience seamless. See, see a house, you click it and you can buy it and close within, you know, a short period of time. So he's taking a painful process and making it very easy. And I think they're going to, they're going to do well. Like they're the, they're the leader. They spent a decade building that brand Zillow. Well, as long as, as long as you can, you know, get a good walkthrough, but I still think, I still think if I'm in real estate, I'd, I'd develop a personal brand, like a oh, son yeah, of a yeah. bitch to where you're coming to me, not Zillow. Why? Well, cause number one, you want to see the house. Number two, you know, you don't have time to sit there and search because yeah. some of those Zillow results, you know, you don't necessarily see every house in the world on Zillow, do you? But maybe they'll get into like virtual, they'll get into better videos. They'll get into these 3D tours. This really accelerated there's during people, COVID. There's people buying sight unseen right now, no? Oh yeah, they just buy it. I mean, they look at the photos. There's people making multiple offers on properties without even being in the same market, you know, because the market's so hot. So I think you got to look at Zillow as a place where there's going to be a small percentage of people who transact there. You know, it doesn't have to be everybody. You're right. The majority of people are going to want to see the house with the traditional real estate agent and get a mortgage from a traditional bank or mortgage company. But there's going to be a small percentage that just buy online. It's becoming that way. So, dude, you you teach people. You're an educator in the industry. You're teaching them what mainly? How to be a top producer or how to build a personal brand t so you can leverage that? Uh, the latter. So I'm thinking if I got completely plateaued in my business, couldn't make more than a certain amount. I'm buying leads online and I'm getting ref lukewarm referrals from people, not enough referrals to live on. So I need to keep running ads and buying leads, running out and calling people. And a lot of the people I'm calling don't want to talk to me. I got to sell them right on why I'm like, there's got to be a better way. Cause I'm getting burnt out. I just like, I'm getting tired of doing this. It's a decade of doing that. You get burnt out, right? You feel like you're running out of treadmill. The other problem with sales, like I noticed, is uh, you can't ever get, like the moment you stop, you're, it's not worth anything. You're done. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you stop buying leads and calling, your business is worthless, right? So I'm like, this sucks after a while. How do I build something that's worth something, like a business that's actually worth something? And that's where I got into like following people you know, like your content or other people that talk about systems that talk about building a real business, hiring people, training people and, uh, building and then building a personal brand. So that's what I talked to guys in the industry about is like, look, you can do this sales stuff, but it's only going to take you so far. Yeah. So we got to learn how to market and build a brand. And then also we got to build a system. Like you have to have software, you have to have people, you have to do training, all this stuff. Systems and processes. Yes. So tell me how to build a personal brand. So I would start with creating consistent uh, profiles on all the major platforms like Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Twitter, even Clubhouse. Uh, what else? You know, everything. Just TikTok, right? So create a consistent profile across all but platforms. Be careful if you do TikTok because from what I heard, TikTok and you don't stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get in there and then you keep fucking looking at shit. It's a rabbit hole. That's an old song. Yeah. So you just basically need to have a profile everywhere. You don't have to go deep with all these places, but you have to appear everywhere. It's called omnipresence, right? So you want to be everywhere. Then figure out your type of content that you want to do. So say I'm a nerd. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not an outgoing guy. I'm not going to do dancing on TikTok. I'm not going to entertain people. Uh, Gary Vee told me you can either entertain people or you can inform them. Pick one. Or you can, could do, you could do, can't you do both? You can blend them, right? You blend them really well. I'm not so good at the entertainment part. I'm trying to get better, but I can definitely inform people. So if you're judging my personal brand, am I entertaining and informative? Yes. 
So that's a rare thing, right? Because what's well, Gary V? Probably both too, right? Because he's super unique in the way you know, he you, informs. But if you think about it, he's entertaining to watch, but he's not entertaining. In other words, yeah. he's just saying what he thinks confidently. That's why I think yeah. a lot of people like him because he's not apologetic about what he thinks. He's just telling you what he thinks. And he's pretty convincing because of that certainty. Yeah. But he, he can keep your attention for an hour keynote. Sure. He which can. is very unique. Like, no, I like the way he, yeah. I like his keynote style because he doesn't, you won't hear him say the same keynote twice. He might talk about the same things, but it's not the same keynote because he goes out there and talks. Yeah. It's not scripted. Yeah, I and, asked and him, Hey, do, do you prepare? Do you have a slide? Like, do you, did you script this? He's like, I just wing it. He that's that's, literally. that's what I like to do. Yeah. People always say, you know, what are you going to, what are you going to, uh, you, oh, you're going to speak. Yeah. I'm like, I don't really speak. I just kind of talk like to me speaking. You can watch them on Monday. Yeah. Show up to the, to the thing on Tuesday at another, you know, venue. Yeah. And they pause at the same time. You know, yeah. The speech begins. Does it surprise you to know? That over 400% and the pause is the same. Yeah. That's a speech. A talk, you walk out there, hey, what's happening? You know, I know today you guys want to talk about it. And then it's f easier. Yeah, it's I more think it's relatable. better. Yeah. It's, it's more engaging. It's more sincere, more authentic. And this is what we need to do in our content, right? So if you're talking about what should your content be about, the content should be about, if I'm going to go have a beer with Brad right now, what could we just talk about? Like what insights could I share business wise about real estate, lending, stocks, investing, whatever the fuck I could talk about without a script, without research, what's in here that I could just talk about. What if there's nothing in there. Then you got to get educated first, because what are you going to share if you don't have anything, you know, to of value to bring? And then maybe you can do the uh, entertaining. Maybe you can dance. Maybe you can rap. Maybe you can do some other shit to get attention. Yeah. I so you can entertain or inform. So if you have nothing to inform people, if you're not a subject matter expert in any particular field or category, you have to go with the entertaining. Yes. And which then, could be pranks. It could be freaking, you know, anything. But yeah, funny videos, viral videos, whatever you want to do. But on the informing thing, I think like people, you'll see people trying to do informative content. And if, you, if you're doing a one minute video and you've reached the limits of your knowledge on the subject in the one minute, you got problems, right? Like if I'm going to do a one minute video about something, I should be able to talk about that topic for 30 minutes without any. But do you prepare it? Cause I saw one you just did that. There was three things and you went one, two, three. And coincidentally it was 60 seconds. So like, like that was prepared. Yeah. What I'll do is that video is like, okay, what are the three things you need to do X within so, 60 seconds? Yep. So I'm going to list those three things. Don't you have to think about them first? Yeah. You have to think like about if them. I just said, Hey, what's the three top things mortgage uh, brokers screw up at? Yeah. I'd have to think you wouldn't yeah. go bang, bang, bang. You'd go, but after like, you know, really doing your research, you'd narrow it down to three things and then you make the 60 second video. Yeah. So I would write out all these things, narrow it down. What are the three things? Collaborate with somebody like Eric and I collaborate all the time. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Well, let's, let's refine this, cut that out. So you got your three topics. I don't script exactly what I'm going to say but I know the three things then I'm just going to film it and it's going to take me seven times to film it. That's okay. Right? Like just do a bunch of them and then by either sometimes you get lucky, take one is fire. It's good to go. You're good. Came in right at 60 seconds, but sometimes it takes you a few times to get it tight. And then the magic of video editing, you just cut all the ums and the ahs and the shit. And you know, you, do make you have it any kick-ass software to, that you use because people always ask me, what do I yeah. use? software wise. And I say editor. Yeah, this is a problem. This is a tell. I don't know why people ask this. They always ask when they, so you go to their page, zero content. And they're asking you, what camera did you use? What software are you using to edit? What, what's the secret hack? So I'm thinking, I think that the people think there's some magic to this, but it's the phone, right? If you're just getting started, this phone is better than anything that you could use. This is like, this phone is more powerful. The camera is insanely good. The iPhone, that's all you need to get started. And then if you want to get into cameras and all this shit, you can get into it. If you have, if you're interested in that, do it. If not, just pay someone to help you with the videos, you know, let them do it. I don't know what camera we're using today. I don't know anything about the mics or audio, so but like, my buddy knows. He yeah, but like all this footage is going to yeah. be chopped up and repurposed a hundred times. Yeah. I don't know the software. 
but Eric knows the software. It's Final Cut Pro is what he's using. You could use that. You could use WeVideo online. It's super easy. You could use a, what iMovie comes on every Mac for free and you can make simple cuts. And then like this thing we just did, we just posted a reel on your Instagram. In the app, you can make cuts. You can cut that video up inside of the app. You don't need fancy software to do this stuff. By the way, folks, go right now to youtube.com forward slash VT Brad Lee and follow my damn YouTube channel. Yes. I just reached 100,000 plus. Wow, congrats. Now man. I need to get to a million. Yeah. Dude, YouTube's ridiculous. Like, you can make a lot of money there. Dude, they're, they send me like a couple, couple thousand dollars a month and I, don't, yeah. I ain't doing anything but uploading videos. Like, what if that was 18,000 a month? Yeah. What if it was 180,000 a month? What if you start inserting you know, brands into your videos. What if you start, what if I started being strategic? Yes. Yeah. What if you start selling shit, you know, and the links in the description where you're getting money while you sleep, you know, there's all these flows of money you can create with your content eventually. But I think uh, this is a problem I want to ask you about. People see this, they see what you're doing. Uh, they see what these big guys are doing and they're already at step 1012 and you're at steps. You're at the starting line zero. And like, you want to be there like quickly, there's no patience. Right. So like, this is a vulnerability. Like people don't want to go from zero to 10. They want to go to from zero to 1000. And, uh, because they can't get there quick enough, they didn't ever start or they quit. You know, I've been seeing that all the time. We do a class for a hundred people and literally zero people execute after the class. I can track it. I can go to each of their social medias and not see one post. And we just talked about the value of posting content for yeah. an hour. And you agreed with me and then you leave the class and you never post a video. Do you think it's a lack of creativity or a lack of freaking discipline? I think it's a first, they don't know how to do it. And then second, everybody knows how to post on social media. They might true. not know the hashtags and how do you make yeah, yeah, the yeah. headlines and how do you edit the ums and ahs out? Cause, cause right now, if you told me, dude, go make something cool, like that thing you made me. Yeah. I'd have one of my editors do it because I don't know how. There, I don't have an app that I just go, oh, chip, 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 make the headline, chip, chip, yeah. chip. So here's, what, here's the reason why I found out and I went through the same thing is you're paralyzed by what someone will think of you. I am not. You're not. I right? don't give But a you f- are, the audience is, is paralyzed and that's why. And I know people who are super confident, yeah, go, extroverted. Go, that's another good point, but I'm, I want to go back to, yeah. because why wouldn't they just take action, film a video and post it? You know, they can't be intimidated by that because anyone can do that. Yeah. But you know, they you, think do, they, do they think they need all the sexy headlines and, and yeah, text yeah. on the screen or something? They think they need it to be perfect. They What's also, Gary say about that? He says the, you know, it's, he, he puts, he says that if you're doing, if you're putting that on a pedestal, you have problems, you know, that's not. How does he say it? Can you do a Gary impression? I can't do it, but I, I can't do it exactly how he would say it, but I think he would curse you out. You I want to get Gary V on the podcast. Can you make that happen? I think we could do it. I, I got a few email addresses. And then this is a hack I think people should be using is someone will say, how do you get on Brad Lee's podcast? How do you get on do this Do something guy's? miraculous or, yeah. or figure out how to get to know me. Yes. You got to do, you got to get your attention somehow and how you can get your attention is through network relationships. I know somebody that, you know, so I can introduce myself or have them introduce me. The other thing is you can get your attention through content. I can post a fuckload of content online. So that way, when somebody introduces me to you, you'll say, who's this Neil character? You check it out and boom, I can build some relationship through my content before I even speak to somebody. Which is true because some, I mean, I get hit up all day to be on this podcast. This podcast get, has reach, has reach, reach, yeah. reach. Like people are offering 10 grand to get on the podcast. So then Legit. I don't. And I'm like, well, you, you, I don't know who you are. So what do I do? I go to their Instagram page because shit. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I don't charge 10 grand to be on a podcast, but I will. Like shit, you got 10 grand. Now I'm underestimating the reach because one guy came on here. I didn't charge him. He said he signed up. 70 new customers from my podcast at like 20 grand each. Wow. I'm like, no shit, dude. 70 people that follow me have had 20 grand in their pocket. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> That's pretty good. Fuck. But dude, I went to check the dude out on a social media before I said, yes, at the end of the day, the, the personal brand is massively important. It's your business card, right? I know, your but you're, you're doing it for mortgage and real estate yeah. people, which is great. 
but why don't you do it just period? Yeah. That's what I, I, I asked, uh, I asked people like what I could do to go to the next level. I'm asking people and they said I should broaden it to just financial. Exactly. Cause dude, it, it, no car salesman. They need to build a personal brand. MLM distributors need to build a personal brand. Furniture salesmen need to build a personal brand. RV salesmen, like everybody needs to build a personal brand. And, and what's crazy is you already have one. As soon as you open an account, yeah. As soon as you have an Instagram profile or, or whatever, you, you have a personal brand. It's just not very good and it's not being maintained. Yeah. So you should train everybody how to build a personal brand. It's like sales, dude. The, the umbrella is massive. Like I can teach anybody how to be a freaking badass salesperson and closer. Now, if you're a salesperson, you want to learn cause you already are in the industry, but there's somebody, Oh, I'm not in sales. Everybody's in sales. Everybody could benefit from learning how to get their way. Yeah. What's crazy is, is the, the, the personal brand solved every problem I had. I can't recruit people. Well, that's now my I point. Can. Yeah. Now, like I, I want to make more money. Now I can. I want to meet Brad Lee. Now I can. Yeah, right? but that's they, my point. Yeah. You, you have an umbrella uh, curriculum, which means you're right now just helping mortgage and real estate. Now, if everybody on this podcast wants you to help them build a brand, where, where would they holler at you, by the way? They can hit Holm. me up at Neil Holm on Instagram. Yeah. So let's see how many different types of people listening to this that are not in the mortgage and real estate would be interested in building a personal brand. Hit him up, throw him a hashtag bomb squad, just so you kind of see yeah. like how many people would be interested in that. Because dude, if I were you, I'd lose the mortgage industry and the real estate industry tag. I'd be like, I teach people how to build personal brands quickly. What, who were who you saying just built up a hundred thousand face? Uh, YouTube? Yeah. So we're, we're doing a podcast tomorrow with Ryan Pineda. Uh, I think it's at Ryan Pineda show or something on Instagram, but he started a YouTube channel 10 months ago and went hard, you know, invested time and money. And now he's at a hundred thousand subscribers in 10 months. And that's valuable. Yeah. So I'm going to go to his office tomorrow and ask him how he did it. Yeah. And find out and try and so hey, I want to learn personally. And then I know people in my audience want to learn. Let me know what he says because you know, most people, like you said, are just gonna tell you, you know, hard work. Yeah, yeah. You know, consistency. No, they we give you know some general real. answer that's not necessarily everything you want to know. Like there's hacks. Big time. You know, um, algorithms. There's someone told me a hack the other day where you watch you look at the the data and the data will tell you when people drop off. So like in the beginning of the video, let's say in the first 40 seconds, you're losing half your audience. And then you start to retain them when it gets to a certain spot. We'll go back, edit your video and start where they're, where, where they're staying and re and put, put that up. And now yeah. you won't lose or supposedly you won't lose those that were whatever was making them lose, cut it off. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you start retaining higher. And when you retain higher people, What's the algorithm do? Oh shit. People like Neil's content. Yeah. Everyone stays when they start watching it. And the, and the, all those, now you're in the suggested. Yes. And too many people are always trying to, you know, think about search because YouTube's a search engine. Do you worry about search? I think so. Yeah. You can, you nope. can, no, but you can yeah, but later 30%. on. 30%. Yeah. Is what I learned. And this dude's good. Really? Evan Carmichael. Oh, okay. He said, everybody's worried about, you know, what are they searching for? He said, that constitutes 30% of traffic on YouTube. You know what constitutes the other 70? Suggested. Which means if you, if you, if you put your content in YouTube to be suggested after another one, that will get you more traffic than if you, you know, figure out, oh, they're searching for how to fix a freaking bike. So you, th you would think, hey, I'm going to make a video on how to fix a bike. Cause everyone's searching for how to fix a bike and then mine will be up. Well, all the ones that have all those views, they're going to be up first anyway, cause they always serve up the, the highest ones. And then you're screwed. You get 30%. Well, if you would have figured out how to come, how to be suggested after the one that has 2 million views, that's the hack. So how do you do that? Well, because you uh, copy the title, people are like, exactly, exactly. Dude, I got to write this down. This is this is this is really good, actually. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll let you play the video. He he did a little private yeah. session for me. He doesn't really have a service to do this, but but I know him, so I said, "Hey, help me." I hit a hundred thousand on my own accidentally, like a dumbass, doing nothing. Yeah. I said, "Tell me how to actually 
intentionally start building this. My, I want a million. So basically what you're talking about is there are videos that do really well on YouTube and it's because they were suggested on the, so you're watching a video and then it gives you the next one to come up and your video should be based on what you, your whole goal should be that to be that suggested video. The suggested video is where all your new traffic's coming from. Okay. Cause that, that's something, uh, I've never been focused on that. I've been always focused on Watch the, the keywords difference. and the SEO and all this shit. It's not it. He said, dude, everyone's focused on that and it's and not that, it. That does work, but it's only going to work a little bit. 30% according yeah. to him. And he's with like, he's, in, dude, I'm telling you that dude knows his shit. So I'll and, let you watch that video. You try it. You watch what happens. You'll go. And like, I found that in all the platforms, the value of the YouTube subscriber is the highest. That's a true fan. If somebody's going to watch you for eight minutes or 15 or 20 minutes, that's a real fan. Like somebody who watches your reel and hits the heart button on Instagram, you know, maybe they're acquaintance, whatever. These are like fans on YouTube. Yeah. Well, this guy showed me that these dropping bombs episodes is, is the one he was showing me. Yeah. I lose half of the people during the opening of the video where it's like going when it does listen up all that. Yep. I lose them because they don't know who I am. All they hear is that. Then they hear me say what it is. Blah, 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 blah. He said, cut that out. Just start talking. So now if you go look at my YouTube dropping bombs clips, it'll just be me and you starting to talk. Why? Well, because I was losing the people in the intro because they don't know me, yeah. but I was getting them once we started talking. So he said, just chop that off and see what happens. And dude, major difference. That's awesome. And it's what's cool about YouTube is you can click on any of your videos, tells you exactly where people are dropping. And I, when I first started posting on YouTube, it was a cliff. It's like a brick out of a window. Start dead. Where are they at now? Now it's like uh, about a third of the people finish the video. So that's getting better. For, that's good for me. If I'm doing a 10 minute video, it starts In and the it's first a slow minute, bleed. How many people do you retain? I don't know. I have to look at that, but I look at that chart and it's like a slow bleed. Let's do it right after this episode. Okay. I'd be interested to find out because he told me what your goal should be, 70%. Don't uh, uh, retain for the one minute. If, if after one minute you have 70% still, that's excellent. Okay. Yeah. You want, he said you want 70% to stay. And I was told you should have an average view time on the video of 50%. So of all the people that saw this video, half of them, you know, or of all the people that saw this video, the average view time was about half of the video. Do you use any special software to look at those? I use uh, TubeBuddy. That's, so, what, that's what he said. Yeah. So folks, there you go. Get TubeBuddy. Start implementing some of this shit. But back to building a personal brand. A lot of people are like, well, what is it? What should it be? And, and whatnot. What do you think of that? I just think like, what do, like what do you- Gary have? says, it's your passion. Should it be your passion? Well, here's the thing. I'm not passionate about mortgages. Or real estate. It's pretty fucking boring if you think about the actual transaction. But I'm passionate about the results it gets. I'm passionate when a client says, thank you. You got me into my first property or you started me on this journey and my life changed because of you. I'm, I, that's what makes me passionate about it is the results. So if you're not passionate about shit yet, don't write it off because it's not. you're not passionate about it. If you become successful at it, voila, you're pal passionate about anything. So like, I just think that's bullshit when people are like, Oh, find your passion. What if your passion is not practical? Like, what if, what if you can't like, make any fucking money doing it? Yeah, like, what if your passion's dogs? According to Gary Vee, you're supposed to start talking about dogs, blog about dogs. Yeah, but they may not, I mean, it's not practical, right? Maybe there's a business there, maybe there's not, I don't know. But I think you should widen the thing about practicality to be like, I mean, about passion to be, to open the idea that you could become passionate about something if you were successful at it. Cause I didn't like mortgages when I sucked at it and I wasn't making any money. When you make seven figures doing mortgages, I fucking love it. Like I'm really passionate about filling out fucking paperwork and getting a loan and buying a house all of a sudden magic. Right? So I think you can become passionate about a lot of shit. Okay. So step one, I want to build a personal brand, but I'm a plumber. Cause, cause my point is everyone should build one Yeah, yeah. mortgage or not. So I'm a plumber. So the best way to get, build a personal brand about a, being a plumber is to teach people that they don't need you. Teach people how to not call the plumber. It's it sounds bad, like so it sounds a, backwards, but it's right. It's it's you're gonna teach people the tips. So if I'm a plumber, I'm gonna get online and say, hey, listen, if you ever find your shitter full, if you just you know wiggle this, 
thing on the back of the toilet and flush her down. That'll save you six months of backup. Yeah. Like how to avoid calling the plumber. Quick fixes you can do yourself. How to fix this, how to do that, you know? Information. And they end, and end up calling you anyway? Maybe they call you anyway. But I think what happens is they call you because they need, they'd rather have you do it. And then they see you educating the space. So they want to work with the teacher, not the student. Right. And they, and they start to trust you. Yes. And so like, uh, I found that like the more relevant content I can put out, meaning like it, it's what the audience wants. If I can do rele if I can hit that relevancy thing, I can also hit the frequency thing. Am I doing it enough? And if I do both of those and I do it in a relatable way, not like I'm Mr. Cool guy or I'm Mr. Banker. If I can do it in a relatable way, I build trust at scale. So now before only the small group of people trusted me and now tens of thousands of people can trust me. And if that many people trust me, when they have a question, they're going to ask the question. And if I have that many conversations going, I'm going to get way more sales. What about all the comments that people leave? Do you have to reply to all those? Uh, I think you should, because I think it looks like you have to look at when you're trying to build something in the beginning, uh, people who leave a comment, like, you should be grateful that they engaged with your content, especially if you have no audience. So I reply to almost everybody as much as I can. If they DM you, reply to them. Um, you know, if it's as long as you have, if it's not taking away time from your your other shit that you got to do, do it as much as you can, and especially in the beginning. So every single person that reaches out to me, I reply to. How'd you get uh, next to old Gary V? So Gary V. So uh, I'm following his content, right? I'm a I'm kind of burnt out. Oh, a video pops up in my Instagram one day and it basically said something like along the lines. And I had seen this content before for, but for some reason, this one stuck with me and it said, you're either on this side or this side, you're either on the guy who was complaining. This sucks. The government sucks. This fucking people screwed me. I got screwed. It's not fair. It's rigged. Or you're on this side. Here's an opportunity. Here's how I can do it. And basically what he's saying is like, what you look for, you're going to find. And that's how fucking life works. And at the end of the video, he says, that's how fucking life works. And I don't know why I'd seen this saying many times, but for some reason it clicked. I'm like, dude, I'm that guy. I'm the fucking cynic. Everything sucks. This guy got the opportunity because he knows the people. That's not fair to me. I don't know the people, whatever. Right. Making excuses that clicked with me. And I was like, oh shit, I love Gary V's content. Right. So I started watching more of it, watching his YouTube and stuff. I'm a big fan. One day I'm watching his stories in his stories. I noticed he promotes his other products, whether it's a shoe that he just did with K-Swiss, whether it's a wine brand he just started. So he starts this company called Empathy Wines and he's promoting it. He wants to get a bunch of sales because he's just ramped it up. They need sales right out the gate. So he says, hey, uh, send me your deals. Like if you, wanna, if you wanna barter with me, buy some wine, a lot of wine, and I'll do something for you. Send them here. It's a quick swipe up, right? So I go in there, I'm like, Hey Gary, you know, uh, you're coming to, uh, speak at a conference. I'd like to do a podcast with you. And I gave him a little spiel about me. Um, I'd be willing to buy some wine. You know, I could spend like $5,000 of wine. Can we do a podcast? Uh, the team replies to me and says, Gary's thank you for your submission. Gary's time is very valuable. He's paid at least $100,000 for a keynote, $50,000 for a strategy session. So, you know, Thank you for asking, but you know, fuck off is what I was told, right? So I reply to that email and I say, um, uh, I say, you know what? I totally understand guys. Sorry. I was just, you know, I was just trying like, you know, I'm not in a position to spend 50 or hundred grand, right? It's just a small thing I was asking for maybe 10, 15 minute podcast. I said, the most I was able to do is probably like 10 K and, uh, I was only looking maybe for 15 minutes. And when I replied to that, I put CC Gary at VaynerMedia.com. On a Sunday at like one in the morning, I get a reply from Gary. One line, I'm in for 15 minutes. I don't know if I just got lucky. You, yeah, you got lucky. He fucking saw the email. I don't yeah. know what happened. Yeah, you got lucky. So he Cause, replied. Cause I'll, do, I'll do it sometimes here because I have Maria going through a bunch of people that either want to be on a podcast or want me on a podcast. And sometimes, every once in a while, I'll get the the email and I'll read the thread and, and they're saying, no, he's busy, he's traveling, he's yeah, yeah. not available. And I'll go, do it. Yeah. 
That's so what it is. He, he, dude, you got lucky. That was a good I got one. fucking lucky. So that's cool. So he replies, I'm in for 15 minutes. I'm like, fuck, that's fucking awesome, right? So I bought $10,000 worth of wine. The wine's cool. I can give it to clients. Yeah. I mean, I can repurpose that shit, and right? You, and you repurpose the footage. Oh, yeah. And you got valuable content. And you got valuable advice. Big time. Like, who would not See, pay 10 people, grand to, pay, to sit in a room with Gary? A lot you of know, them. By the a way, lot of them, dude. There's a lot of people out there that are not smart enough that they'd be like, well, what, what is he going to do for me? Well, talk to him for 15 minutes. Big deal. Well, dude, what are you asking in those 15 minutes? Yeah. And then what are you going to do with that information? Because if, if, if you're not going to listen to it, then you might as well. I'll Not tell you right asked. now, without question, that 15 minutes made me a million dollars. Yeah, because you went you went from like 300 grand a year up to a, over a million in 12 months. Yeah. Was it after you talked to him? Uh, it was during that time, yeah. He told me what to do. Uh, what's crazy about Gary is I had a 15-minute thing booked with him. He sat with us for an hour and 20 minutes. Like, he's genuinely a nice fucking guy. Yeah. Like, I mean, he, 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 uh, he sat with us. Did a full hour podcast. It's on my YouTube right now. Um, and gave us a bunch of advice, tips. And then the other thing he did was uh, kind of told, you know, got around the idea of thinking long-term, building a brand, getting out of sales and getting more into marketing. And that's where, you know, you'll shift your business. So what do you think the most important lesson you've ever learned as far as building the personal brand? I think it's... Uh, to get out of this short-term metrics and realize that this is a long game. Like you're going to get, you're building, it's like, you look at a stock chart. Like your, your personal brand is, a, it's on a fucking chart. It's like a stock and it's, you know, you wanting it to spike and be, you know, he reach those levels super quick is the vulnerability. Like it's a long game. If you look at any big valuable company, it's a slow grind and it's worth a lot at the end. What's your podcast called? The Neil Home Podcast. The Neil Home. So you're doing everything Neil. Yeah, I'm just putting Neil Home. So that was my handle on Instagram, something to do with real estate, home. I don't know why, and I just stuck with it. So it's consistent across all platforms, Neil Home. But your name's Neil Dingra. Yeah, but nobody can spell fucking Dingra. So now I got people messaging me saying, thinking my last name is Home. Like, Mr. Home, uh, you know, we, we'd like to... Talk to you about this or something. I mean, can you text Gary? Did you guys end up friends or no? Yeah, yeah, I got his text. Because that's that happens also. Most people don't understand. Yeah, like freaking, you go hire a coach or a consulting for with, with a you know celebritized person. Yeah. Next thing you know, if you're a cool person, next thing you know, you end up freaking buddies and you you're, you're texting people for years. Yeah. When in reality, you got 15 minutes, son. Well, that 15 minutes turned into an hour 20, hour 20 turned into, you know, tic-tac. Now you got a little connection. Yeah. Relationships are the new economy. Big time. So I think, you know, paying to be in a room, you could think it's, it's a waste of money or you could think it's the best money you ever spent based on what you do with that, with that little window you got. So, yeah. but, you, you but, you had, but you had 10 G's. A lot of people don't, especially now with this COVID shit. So, yeah. so if I'm out there, you know, just starting my business and I want to build a personal brand. I've got an iPhone. I've got a little bit of time and I'm willing to do it myself. Yep. Like where I can't hire that dude, like yep. I, but I can do it myself. What would you suggest? So I would just, if you're in any business, plumbing, real estate, whatever the fuck it is, just take a piece of paper out and draw a line down the middle and, at, and list the questions that you get from clients, the problems that your clients have. And on the other side, list how you answer or how you solve those problems. And then each one of those things is a piece of content. It's literally that simple. I always get asked this question by people or I always go fix this thing. That's your, an that's your piece of content, how you did it, how you answer those problems. And then basically make content around that, whether it's you talking to your camera, uh, whether it's you writing it out in written format and post posting it on LinkedIn as a blog. Um, it just takes time, you know? So you just block the time on your calendar and do it like any other activity. And then how long do you think it'll take before it starts to actually build up and pay off? Uh, so initially, you know, people have this thing of like, you need a lot of followers and you need a lot of subscribers to make money. You don't need that much, you know, on a local level, you don't need much, especially if you're in a high margin business. Right. So I think of a video on YouTube that's only got 700 views for me that made me six figures because it got me eight deals. Right. And that video is not viral. I don't have that many subscribers, but if somebody watched it and reached out to you, 
and used, you know, that if that's the reason why somebody came out to you to work with you, it's, it's worth a lot more. Hey, that's another hack I, I learned about YouTube. When you're looking at TubeBuddy, you see someone with 3 million subs yeah. and the, and the video has got 3 million views. Is that good or bad? I don't know. 3 million views. It's like, yeah, that's, that's good. Not really. Not with 3 million subs. Like for example, you're looking for shit where, where they have like 3 million subs and 9 million views. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or they've got 80,000 subs and 2 million views. So subs versus views. It, a lot of times people are just going, oh, these have millions. It must be popular. Well, if you have 16 million subs and 2 million views, wasn't very popular, was it? Yeah. So so you, there's all kinds of these little hacks to implement, but to and get started cool, yeah. and do the basics is what's most important. Yeah. Because most people won't get started to even get to those. And the other thing is, is like, if you're trying to get results from the first few videos, those are just practice to get you good in becoming relatable. And so comfortable. Don't fo- yeah, so don't focus on that. Um, and if you don't even want to post it to begin with, just shoot the videos and keep them in your phone. You know, I think you should post them right away. But some people just want to get comfortable on camera before they post them. I know people, we've shot the videos for them. They won't post them because they didn't like the way they looked in the video. So I think people are really like, dude, like if you're older and you're married, like uh, why are you so concerned about like the way you look on a video or the way you look in a poster and all these things? Like people are just like, I've noticed they're paralyzed by the way they look on their, on their social media. Like they, they, they put this on a, the highest pedestal. Like, um, what do I look like? What are people thinking of me? They're going to think it's dumb. You, you know how many videos I've shot with my phone and then not posted because I thought, oh, that's dumb. People are going to, you know, they'll think that's stupid. You don't post it. Like just well, what post if you it. post it and, and it, they do think it's stupid. Like yeah. you were correct. Yeah. But that, now, I you, think, now you ruined your brand. Now you look like a dick. Yeah. But that's the downside. What's the upside? that maybe somebody reaches out to you because of that video. Maybe you connect with some more people because of that know, video. Shouldn't you listen to your intuition? Like, Hey man, that's, that's a stupid video. No, but I think when it's you in the beginning, you think you just, you're so critical of yourself. You're overcritical of yourself. I know, but like, that's, that's one of those, I don't know how to advise people. Cause yeah. I get what you're saying, but like, if you think it's stupid, maybe redo it until well, yeah, you yeah, think yeah. it's good. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I'd look at it and think, I think like that's stupid. And I go, Oh, nope. I got to post it anyway. Cause now you got a bunch of stupid shit online and everyone thinks. Yeah, you're have you idiot. ever shot a video where you didn't like quite like the way you looked in the video? Looked. Yes. And you posted. I anyway. ain't talking about looks. What you said, I think yeah, is yeah, what yeah. matters. Yeah. But I'm saying people put this part, the like, appearance on, on a pedestal. Like the light, the fucking way they yeah, look, no, like, the sound. All like that I've shit. dropped f bombs on, and when I looked at it, I'm like, that had. I, I said, "Fuck!" Every five seconds, like yeah, I yeah. wish I didn't say all those f bombs, but I still posted it because it, you know, my brand is. They know I'm going to say whatever I'm thinking, but personally, I wish I didn't say all those f bombs. But I would just say this: once you get to a base level where you could ask people, Hey, honestly, what do you think of this video? And they're, you know, they give you their honest feedback and maybe ask a stranger, you know, to get some honest feedback. And it's at a base level from that point on, you're going to think that things are not as good as other. And that's your subjective opinion. And I've posted, made a bunch of reels. The ones I thought weren't that good somehow got way more views. The ones I thought were dope. This one's fire. This one's going to crush. So I'm going viral. Nobody liked it. So we're wrong a lot of times mm. about our own content. So if you have a bunch of content, just post it all of it. What's the worst that happens? If it's if it's of us if it's of a certain level, it's not like gonna take away from your brand, but you just didn't like it as much as the other ones. What's the worst that happens? Someone sees it and they just keep scrolling. I mean Or like, hey, that makes me look a little fat. Yeah. I mean they just keep you you're all not the that videos important. make me look fat. I always tell people. If a camera adds 10 pounds, it looks like you got four cameras on you. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad, man. But it does, it does like, it takes energy away from you, makes you look different, you know, so you kind of got to get over all that stuff first. And I guess if you don't like the way you look, you could improve that too, right? Well, you should. Yeah. Because people judge you. Yeah. You realize that. Yeah. That's why so many people are afraid of, 
you know, building that personal brand because they're afraid of people judging them. But when you start to realize everyone's not going to like you, period, yeah, period, then you start to realize, like, I guess it doesn't matter then because everyone's not going to like me anyway, which means someone's not going to like what I'm posting. The question is, is how many people will? So a lot of times I post shit, just, I don't really care if you like me or not. I'm just throwing out my opinion or here's something that's helped me and hopefully it helps you. And dude, next thing you know, I had 10,000 followers, then 20,000 followers, then 300,000 followers. Now it's like, it start. I think I got um, suppressed back when I was talking about uh, COVID. I didn't say that. You did. Yeah. (laughs) Suppress Neil. Don't suppress me no more. That's another thing. People are like, dude, I thought you were real. Why don't you just keep talking about it? You know, I am real. I'm just not stupid. Like, dude, if they want to silence your ass, well, now you're fucked. Yeah. Then you have no platform. Now you have zero platform. Now you're out on a street corner looking like a nut job talking about freaking shit you shouldn't be talking about. But but when you you, said it, I was like, finally, somebody said it. So that's, that's viral content. If you didn't have the courage to say it, but Brad had the courage to say it. I love that shit. Well, you want, and you also want to say it fast. Yeah. Like for example, keep your eye on the news keep your eye on what's trending. And if you're in, if you're into content creation, the second you see something pop, man, go, go give your opinion, whip it up, drop it out there. Cause a lot of times I think first is best. Yeah. That's, that was the first thing we talked about, which was relevancy. It's, it's the most relevant content because it's right now it's happening today. What's relevant today. Do you know? Relevant today, uh, in news wise. Yeah. Um, so Coinbase, you, Coinbase, uh, investing cryptocurrency, is very relevant. If you look at Google Trends, so go to Google Trends or go to answerthepublic.com and you'll type in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, Coinbase, type in investing, and it will tell you what people are searching for today, right now, and what the trends are. Answerthepublic.com? Yeah, and the the easier one is Google Trends. Like literally type Google Trends. And if you type in, it will tell you the exact words that people are typing into Google and uh, what's trending today then you can, you can make relevant content around those topics. So I'll give you a quick example. Uh, one year ago today, I go to Google Trends and I type real estate in Google Trends. The top search was real estate crash, real estate bubble. What will COVID do to real estate? Is real estate too expensive? Like, so basically people are saying real estate's in the second bubble. It's gonna crash. Now COVID is gonna make it crash, right? So I do a video about looking at the true data of the market, here's why real estate won't crash. And the thumbnail to that video is, are we headed for real estate bubble 2.0? Real estate's gonna crash and you know, you make your face all uh, worried and you know, scared. That video I send to my entire database of everybody I've done business with in the past decade. That's the most relevant thing that I can do on that day. The replies you get to it are insane. Thanks for sending me this. By the way, I have a question. By the way, could you help my sister? By the way, here. Or I'm looking at doing another deal. Thanks for sending me this. You know, like I was, it's the most relevant thing you can do. And people aren't getting that. They're getting news, which is basically just panic porn. It's not like real news. It's opinion based news. Like, you know, so they're being told what to think here and there. You can be the source of like uh, real information on the ground in your market. That's what people don't realize. And people really want this information. So are you, uh, is your goal to like become Neil Home worldwide known? Yeah, I think attention is important. Like I would like to be known by as many people as possible. So you have a process all put into place? I'm working on it. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Will you share that process of people reach out to you? Oh yeah, for sure. How many people have you helped actually accomplish a good personal brand and Uh, I would say- um, I don't, I don't track every single person, what they're doing, but we've done events with, you know, in the hundreds of people, maybe thousand people over the, over the years. And then also, um, I don't know how many people we impact through the content, but I do know I get DMS every single day from other people within our industry saying, Hey dude, thanks for the stuff you did. You inspired me to do my own content or, Hey, thanks for this. Thanks for that. Or they ask questions and we give them answers. So this happens every day. All right. And last question. What do you think you said, you know, it's made me millions, but from a increased perspective, having a personal brand that you have now and yeah. you know, how long did it take? How long did it take? Uh, 
to get results, it probably takes a year. How long have you built the brand you have now? Two years. Okay. So in two years, how your income increased by how, what percentage? Uh, so increased by 400% one in the first year. And then, um, like 250% again. So it's extremely well worth it. Big time. It's a game changer Folks, for anybody. You better go follow him at Neil home. If you guys are looking to build a personal brand, you want to know how to do it. You want the hacks, the blueprints, the shit that you don't, you'll take months to learn, reach out to them, share this out with somebody just in case they want to. And remember to go subscribe to my YouTube channel, you dirty bastards. Until next time, keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.